Okay, welcome everybody. I'm going to tell you all about pastel today, all about the paper and the pastels, the tools, fixative, storage, framing, um, and um, also in my PDF download we have the top tips, um, FAQs, and where to buy um, if you're in the UK. Right, first of all, the most important thing is to just a little word about safety with pastels. You um, can see I've got my water bottle. I haven't got a cup of tea, I've got a water bottle. Don't have drink or food around them um, and always wash your hands. That's mainly the, the most um, the safety information you're going to need to know. Um, just don't eat food when you've got pastels around. The student grade ones are very safe. Um, the more um, professional grade ones you do have to be a little bit more careful but basically just wash your hands and do not eat food or have drink around where pastel dust can go in your um, drink. Have a drink that's got a lid on it. Okay so next Paper. Paper is more important than your pastels when you're a beginner because paper can give you so many different effects. If I, if I show you this piece, it's a piece of printer paper. Uh, we'll get a pastel, any pastel will do, doesn't matter what. Here's one. If we put some pastel on printer paper, it really doesn't do much at all. It does actually stay on the paper, but it's not going to stay in place. It blends too well. Um, and you can actually see the texture of the paper there. Gosh, you wouldn't have thought printer paper would have a texture to it, would you? But you can see it. So it just blends out too quickly. And as you can see, my finger, most of the pastel got absorbed into my finger rather than on the paper. So what you really need is paper with a tooth. So if you're just starting out or you're, you're using pastels with children you can use something like sugar paper or um, wallpaper lining paper or you could use, if you've got watercolour paper lying around you can use that as well. Um, watercolour paper, um, a rough surface is very good. The pastel will adhere to that because it's got some tooth on it as you can see there and there the pastel is staying more on the paper rather than on my finger this time so in terms of real pastel paper that you can buy um, specifically for pastel we've got four main different ranges we've got the paper type with a tooth We've got um, a coated paper, which um, is sprayed onto a card surface. We've got a velour paper, which has a pile to it, a bit like a carpet. And we've got um, sanded papers as well. I'm going to talk a bit more about those as we go along. The first one we're going to talk about is the Canson Mitant. It's a 160 gram paper. It's, it, I wouldn't say it's card, it's a little bit thicker than normal paper. Um, it's a, a good paper. Um, I started with Canson Mitant. It's um, a really, really good paper. One side is um, textured and the other side is smooth you can use any type of pastel on it, it's not a problem. And we're going to do a little seascape just to show you how you can use it. I'm going to use a set of 24 Jaxol pastels here. This past, uh, pastel range goes up to 72 in a set, but you can quite adequately cope with 24 with um, a simple seascape. So 
So we're going to do something just like this. So here's the paper. This is the smooth side of the Canson Mitant. You can use the rough side, absolutely. It's got more tooth to it. Um, you can add more pastel to it. So if you were using um, this paper on a smooth side, you could add more detail. On the rough side, it would be something more um, abstract, perhaps. Although some people do use the rough side for um, detailed work. first thing I'm going to do is get a piece of masking tape and just run it along my trouser leg so it's not so sticky here because I don't want it to stick to the paper. I'm just going to put that there for the horizon and rub it down there. This piece of paper is about um, 6 by 4 inches. So we're going to do the sky first and we're going to choose some nice colours to blend with this um, student grade set of pastels. Applying the colour quite liberally, just using the flat of the pastel there. So I've done about a third of the way up. And then I'm going to use this peachy colour again I use the flat edge and then I'm going to use some blue and a darker blue at the top. Now I need to blend these colours. Before I do though, you'll notice that there's a lot of pastel dust all around here. I'm just using this camera lens dust blower to blow everything off and I'm directing it down rather than up into the air. So if I blow, all that pastel dust is going to go in the air and you're going to end, going to end up breathing it in. So just gently blow it down. Somebody's just asked the question, thank you Louise, um, about using acid-free masking tape or pH neutral. Yes, um, you should be using that if you're doing professional framing, that's right. If you're not, if um, sorry, Yes, you should be using it if you're doing professional work for galleries and commissions. If you're just learning and practicing, any masking tape is absolutely fine. However, this masking tape is only going to be on here a few seconds, so I really wouldn't worry about that. Um, blending, I'm going to use my finger and I'm using circles. Now, my finger's all yellow now. If I take it into this colour, it's going to be very yellow and I don't want that, so I'm just going to clean it off. Just a quick wipe on a damp flannel will do. Now I'm going to blend these two layers. Again, you see I'm just using circles. If I was to go across like this I just end up with three bands of colour. I'm going to add some pink into here. I'm getting a lovely orangey colour in between. And I can switch fingers. You could even have a finger for each colour. You notice on this paper 
it's quite easy to blend. That's because it's got a small tooth. So the, the smaller the tooth, the easier it is to blend. We'll just get our dust blower, get rid of any dust. We can add some cream in there if we want to. Got a blue finger there. There we go. Some more pink. And then just little circles to blend. There's my pink finger. And yellow. There we go. Then we can gently pull this off. This is why we got rid of some of the tack of the tape, because otherwise it would have stuck. Give that a little blow along the horizon. Turn the tape upside down and stick it along there. go and then we can get our blues and put some C on. So we choose three different blues do some gentle blending, not with a yellow finger. There we go. And as you'll see, we didn't blend too much there, we left some, some texture on there so we could keep some of the waves. Then we can get a pencil, just hiding under here. We could put some extra dark waves in if we wanted to. You could do this with a pastel, uh, I'm just using a pencil because it's um, gives me a little bit more detail and precision. You can then put some some buildings or some trees or just nondescript shapes that could be anything going on there, dockside or anything, just lines that could represent something on the horizon. You could even put a little boat in there, very Just very rough um, and if you wanted to add some reflections from the sky you can do that as well but don't blend these or you'll end up with green you can put those on maybe if there was um, if there was a lot more pink in the sky you could put pink in there like that 
So the beauty of pastels is the speed in which you can create a painting. You don't have to wait for it to dry, you don't have to mix colours. Um, like paint, you don't have to um, have a palette out all the time um, that you have to clean. You, you just pick up your pastels and you go. That's what I love about pastels. So that was the Canson Me Tant paper. Just write that down for you. It's Canson Me Tant the Remember the paper is the most important thing when you're starting out. You might find that you love this paper and you don't want to go any further, that's absolutely fine. Um, like I said, when I started I used this paper, but then gradually, as I found that I wanted to get more detail in my work, I looked at other papers. And the first um, one I looked at was Velour. This paper is a, a bit like a Marmite paper, you either love it or hate it. I'll just let a couple of more people in. There we go. You either love it or hate it. Um, it's got a pile to it like a carpet. Uh, you can put pastel on very easily. You can use the flat of the pastel. You can use the end like this or you can use the a sharp edge. Get lots of different strokes. And you can layer it as well. So I can now go darker. This paper um, will take a lot of pastel. I think it's got the biggest tooth out of all the pastel papers. So it really does take a lot of pastel. I was pressing quite hard to get that colour on there. And you need to rub it into the paper. If you don't rub it in um, and you knock it, the pastel will fall off. So you do have to be careful there. You can get detail on this paper as well. The softer pencils work better. Let's see. This is a Caran d'Ache. Caran d'Ache are um, quite soft pastels and you can get them to go over the top by wiping them on. If you're if you use it down like that, it doesn't always work. It does today. But if you um, wipe it down like this, it works a lot better. So you can get lots of detail on there. I find each paper comes with a learning curve. So if you're used to one type of paper, uh, it, you do need um, to expect a bit of a learning curve before you can get the next paper to work. You do use fairly similar techniques on all paper, but but it is a there is a learning curve to it to, to the feel of the paper and how the pastel is, uh, behaves on the paper. So this one was velour. I've used this one for a number of years um, very effectively, and it will give you a a lovely soft focus um, to your to your painting. The next paper is this one, which is pastel mat. A pastel mat is a loved paper by pastel artists and coloured pencil artists. Um, it's it's very very popular. Um, it's got a sprayed surface of a cork substance, and if you touch it, it doesn't feel very rough. You don't think it's got a very big tooth, but it really does allow you to layer um, pastel on top of each other. So if we've got some blue, we could put pink on top. There, you can see that straight on top of each other. It's a very good paper and it's not blending that much. I've put quite a thick layer on there um, so it will blend. If I just do little circles down the middle there, we'll blend into a nice purple colour there. But if you just put a little bit on, 
to a, a dark, darker colour so you can see. Can you see that one? Do that one. It doesn't blend. Again, I did a thick layer. Do a light layer. Clean the finger. And it doesn't blend that much. Whereas on this paper, if we put a thin layer on, it's going to blend right out there. On this paper, it won't blend so much. It will stay where it is. Even if I really push it hard. Okay, so you need to be aware of the properties of each paper um, and, and work with them. Because sometimes you'll want it to really blend well and sometimes you'll want it to stay where it is. So it's good to have a practice with all these papers. The uh, shops online do sell um, packs where you can test the paper. So they'll sell, a, for example, a, um, a pastel mat pack with all the different colours in it so you can trial it. So it does save you having to buy a pad of each one and then realising that actually you don't like it and you've, you're left over with a, a whole pad. Right, so we've done pastel mat. Um, actually, more information about pastel mat is you can wash it. It's fantastic, <laughs> fantastic multimedia paper. Actually, you could you don't just have to use um, pastel on it. You can use um, ink. Um, Water-based inks tend to work best. Um, I've heard reports about things like um, acrylic paint, um, the surface not really liking it, so you could use water-based inks or you could use um, just watercolour. As you can see this bit is a bit murky because I have actually washed it. Uh, here's a bit that I was doing a little video from the other day and showing you how you could wash the paper. Um, this is a damp flannel and we can just take it off like that and you can take it right back to where you started. When I tell people the price of this paper, they do go, they do uh, squirm a bit. It is quite expensive, um, but when I then I tell them that you can wash it, it it's um, a relief because you you don't waste it. If you've done something that you you really are not proud of and you don't even want to keep, you can wash it off and do something else on it. So it's a very versatile paper and really worth um, trying. The next paper we've got is, oh, before I move on actually, this um, pastel mat is um, a type of paper. So all these papers that I've got here are types of paper. So we've got paper that is um, just paper with a texture on it, coated papers, the velour which is in a category of its own and the sanded papers. So in this category you also have um, Canson Mitant Touch. Uh, it's obviously made by Canson and um, it's another sprayed surface and it behaves a little bit like a sanded paper. There is another one from Art Spectrum as well which has a much smoother tooth which um, you might like. That is all in the um, the guide that I've got for you as well. Now the last type of paper is this sanded paper. This one I've got on here is actually wet and dry paper. Um, you can just buy that from the hardware store and it's a really good um, substitute for the real thing which is called UART paper or Fisher 400 paper. Um, it's exactly the same, as far as I can work out, it's exactly the same, except UART and Fisher paper are archival, so it's acid free. Whereas this paper, just wet and dry paper, is not archival. 
as far as we're aware. Um, but it behaves exactly the same. You can use wet and dry paper, as it says in the name, wet and dry. You can wet it, just like um, the pastel mat, you can wash it off. And just like the, the UART and the Fisher 400, you can also wash this. So this is a piece of washed UART paper. Um, I've, I've washed it a few times now and I've literally submerged the whole thing under water and it's come out not even creased as you can see. So it's a very versatile paper. It comes in lots of different grits. If you're familiar with wet and dry paper um, or, or even sandpaper, um, sandpaper comes in different grits. Some are smoother and some are, some are um, more textured. Um, it's exactly the same for this kind of paper. Um, they, they think they start at about 240 grit, which is quite, quite rough, and they go all the way up to 800 grit. Whereas in the sandpaper, not sandpaper, the uh, wet and dry paper, which is here, um, you c they can go up to, gosh, I think 2,400 grit. Um, it's... This, this paper here from the hardware store, really worth trying. If you like it and want to do um, more art with it, you can try this um, UART paper or the Fisher 400 for an archival version of it. So this is a good fun paper to, to work with. I think you can get it for about 30 pence a sheet or something like that. So very useful. Um, we can make some nice marks with these square pastels. We can use, get our thin stroke, we can cross hatch, we can come down like this and also what you can do is press on hard and then pull off like this. This is a nice, nice effect to going from dark to light. So for example, if I had a brown could drag that down and then go a bit lighter and got an ochre come down like that and we could blend all three together this uh, wet and dry paper is uh, I think it's a thousand grit so it's very um, very smooth um, you have to be really careful to not blend with your finger when there's hardly any pastel on the paper because you'll end up with very sore fingers but look how beautifully that blends together and then you can use more pastel on top you see this lighter pastel will go on top just fine or we could get pencils and go on top do some hairs absolutely fine like that works similarly to the pastel mat The grit number for wet and dry paper would be anything from about 600 up to 1200. If you can get a multi-pack, you could you could try different grits to suit your to suit your style. Right next, we're going to look at pastels. there. I'll show you what kind of pastels there are. So you've seen the Jaxal pastels and they're a really good starter set. Uh, you can get the set of 72. Um, if you shop in the right places you can get it for about um, 20 to 25 pounds. Um, but from there you can go up and the world literally is your oyster in terms of how much you're going to pay for a pastel stick. I'll show you this one first. It's the Henri Roche pastel from the Maison du Pastel in Paris. Um, so far they are the most expensive pastels I've ever seen. 
They are um, about £20 a stick, so that's about £25 um, American dollars. Um, they are full full of pastel. I have two that I would, bought for me for a, a birthday present. Um, they're so expensive and so precious, I've never used them. <laughs> so, I don't think I'll be buying any more soon. Um, I'll stick to my unison pastels. Right, the next set, which is um, a very good pastel, is um, Rembrandt pastels. They are absol absolutely fine. They are... They feel a bit... Um, when I put them on the paper they feel a bit like oil pastels rather than chalk pastels but they're not at all um, it's, it's just how they feel when they go on the paper and there's, they're absolutely fine to use they are machine made um, they're just not for me and that's why I don't use them because I, they don't suit um, my way of working when you buy pastels I recommend that you buy a few of each just to work out which ones that you prefer because it really is a personal choice about what you like. For me, um, as a lot of you already know, um, I prefer the Unison pastels. They're, they're just the right... Um, just the right smoothness for me. They're, they're, just, they're just soft. They, they're not too soft. Some pastels are so soft that they crumble when you touch them. Um, and I found these work so well for me and what I do. Um, and you'll do the same. You'll, you'll find a pastel that works really well for you. Um, this one is an SAA um, Artist Soft Pastel. SAA is a, the Society for All Artists and they make some of their own pastels. Another very good pastel. They're similar to the Rembrandts work in a, a similar way they haven't got as I would say they haven't got as much pigment as the unisons um, but that and again another good pastel to use the thing about the unisons brand and the Sennelier brand and all the top brands is that they are light fast and they have a high amount of pigment in them um, to binder you'll find in these These Jaxal ones here, they've got a lot more binder in them than pigment. So you'll have to use more pastel to get the colour vibrancy. Whereas the the Unison pastels, you'll, you'll need a lot less because more of the stick is pigment rather than binder. So buy a few of each type and go for the ones that you, you feel work for you and your technique. Obviously, unisons are the best pastels in the world, according to me. <laughs> they blend beautifully. Just like that. Lovely, lovely pastels. Right, you've also got pan pastels. Okay, so Pam has just said um, she bought SAA pastels and they were very gritty but give a lovely texture if you use it for that purpose. So you can have a variety of pastels and use them for different purposes if you want to. Um, I've got down here some harder sticks. These are Faber-Castell. These are um, light fast as well, as light fast as their pencils, absolutely fine to use and the the stick variety are more more suited for drawing, being able to draw with them if you wanted. They work very well for that. I'll just show you these as well. I've got some Terry Ludwig Ludwigs here. They've got some gorgeous colours and they are square section is square. Some people prefer using square pastels to round ones. Um, these are very soft, quite crumbly. I don't know if you can see that as I'm putting this on the paper there's pastel falling down as I put them on so they are quite crumbly. 
the reason I've got these is because um, of this eggplant colour which is um, just a gorgeous, gorgeous colour but they are a, a bit crumbly for me I don't want all this dust everywhere I prefer a pastel that um, holds together better so we're going to move on to pan pastels now these are pan pastels they do look like eye makeup yeah and funnily enough you can use um, eye makeup brushes and just any kind of makeup brushes to um, use them to put them on the paper so it's basically a cake that's been pressed into this this tray just like eye makeup and you can use it like this really lovely the only thing you have to be careful of with these pan pastels is to not use too much this is true for pastel sticks as well so if you use too much and then try and put pencils over the top you can't because for these ones this is so such a fine powder the surface will go like silk it, it's delightful to touch because it's so soft and silky but it's so soft that you can't get a pencil to work over the top of it so oh it, look at that that's quite hard I haven't even put much on there I don't know really didn't put much on and then the the pencils are not taking over the top of that at all that's oh gosh so there's the pencils over let's try a different pencil and it's still not there it's going better now I think there's something wrong with that pencil sometimes pencils get a shiny spot on them and you they um, you can't put it to a surface you can't make it work on a surface because it just gets a shiny spot and they just glide over the top of each other but it's really not going on there that's very odd let's try that pencil that one's better let's do that again because that's not that's not fair on the pan pastel let's try it again there that's not too much there we go you can go straight over the top but if you put too much pan pastel on it'll end up doing what this pencil was doing just now so here's, here's the Rembrandt one, this was the SAA and this was the Unison and you can get it going over the top of all of them depending on how much pastel you use. You've also got these with the pan pastels, they are um, little palette knives um, and they've got little sponges on the end so you, you get different shapes there's a triangular one here as well this is um, really useful I find this useful for portraits and you can not only use them for pan pastels you can use them on your soft pastels so I find this a really good technique for doing portraits because you can be very gentle and very subtle with the colours. There. So we went straight to the lighter colour. I didn't even bother cleaning it off. Just mix them in. Just going to go a bit darker there. I don't know if you can see that on the screen very well. Turn it 
that over and blend that in there. So really nice to blend pastels, not just pan pastels, but to blend any pastels. This one here is a Sennelia pastel. It's a slightly softer pastel, so if you like really soft pastels, Sennelia is a good brand. Right, where are we at? Okay, we've done all the pans. Okay, detail now. Let's have a look at doing some detail. So, here we've got a little demo that I was doing the other day. Little demo here of um, a little boy's collar. Um, I did this in pencil. Um, just get the pencils. Bear with me a second. Here we go. Right. So you can use pencils very, very carefully and do lots of detail. Like this. You don't have to be um, you don't ha you can be very discreet with them the pencils you don't have to just get the sticks and put the sticks on everywhere if you or you're someone who wants to do lots of detailed work you might just want to use pencils that is absolutely fine remember all this is for fun so you don't you don't need to do anything you don't want to do. I hear a lot of the time that people say, oh, somebody told me I had to do this, or I had to do it this way, or oh, you've got to do this, or you've got to do that. Really, just do what makes you happy, so you can enjoy your hobby. You can layer the colours. Are the pencils, everybody asks me about... Um, sharpening them and really the best way to sharpen a pastel pencil is with a knife. Uh, I know that disappoints a lot of people because it's a bit of a, a knack to sharpening with a knife. Get the right colour here. There we go. Um, you do need to practice and I have got a video on YouTube that shows you exactly how to do it. Uh, but if you really can't do it, there are some crank-handled sharpeners you can get. This is one of them. It's a, a this is a Dahl D A H L E one five five. It does work, um, but eventually it will wear out, depending on how often you you pastel. I mean, I do it every day, so you can imagine it will wear out really quickly for me. And sharpening your pencils for detailed work is very important. If you want to get really good detail, you need a sharper pencil. This is not good. I need to sharpen this, but we can just get away with it for a, a little bit of detail here. So you can use the pastels and pencils in any way you prefer. Don't feel like um, you need to do it in a certain way. So here's a, a young lady I was working on as part of the portrait workshop that we were doing recently. I'm just going to do a little bit of her hair here so you don't need to go up here. There's a few questions in here. I'm just going to answer these questions first. Let's, we've got, what paper is best with pencils? I would say 
pastel mat or the sanded paper is best. Uh, even the Canson Mitant. The only one I would be cautious of with just pencils is the Velour because you do need some soft pastel down first before you, you, before you um, use pencils on Velour. Yes, Sandra, yes, you can, yeah, use pan pastel tools with um, soft pastels, absolutely. So if you've already got soft pastels, you can just buy the tools and um, use them like pan pastels. And Lindsay, yes, um, working dark to light is good. Um, it's a guideline, not a rule. So if you need to put the light down first, that's absolutely fine as well. I'll just show you something in relation to that. So for example, just blow this pastel dust away. If we had some white on here, you could then go over with a pencil try this one and you can tint you can tint the white so there's an exception to the rule and then if you want it to get in there darker like that and then maybe you wanted to make it a bit yellower you could just go over the top with a yellow and you can still see your white underneath So the marks have stayed where they are, even though you've tinted it over the top. Oh, somebody's used oil-based coloured pencils over the pan pastels. Yes, I, I hear a lot of um, pencil coloured pencil artists use um, their pencils over pan pastels. You just, you, I think you still have to be careful with how much pan pastel you put down though. Pan pastels are excellent for backgrounds, especially out of focus backgrounds. Uh, is there a danger of washing off the tooth on pastel mat? No, you won't wash it off. It's a waterproof surface, so there's no danger of that at all. Uh, right, let's move on. I was just going to do this young lady some hair she's got her hair this side and this side I'm going to add some so I've got three pastels a dark a mid-tone and a light tone and I'm just going to very carefully, and this is going to be quite tricky because I can't come round this side because <laughs> the camera's in the way. But knowing where to put a soft pastel, uh, a chunky soft pastel on the paper is a learning curve. So you do need to. Um, be aware that I can only do this because I've practiced it a lot and I'm getting close to her face because I've practiced and I'm not going on her face. What you can do if you're not sure where you are with the pastel because you can't see, you can just do it a dot and see where it's touching the paper. So then that's my dark tone, so we're going dark to light here. Here's the mid-tone. Uh, 
and then we'll put the light tone on. Then we'll carefully blend go just blending these three colors dark mid and the light tone just to get the the right amount of each to create a, an effect of her hair you'll notice I'm not doing every single little strand and then you can get some pencils and add a bit of detail in there And remember, you don't always have to blend. You can leave some texture. I think I even used some pink on the other side of her hair here. And two more questions. Let's just get this pink on first. So two more questions, which were, um, how do you prevent yourself leaning on the bit you've done so you don't rub it off? Good question. You can use some of this. This is glassine paper. It's got a really shiny surface, one side. You could also use tracing paper or uh, parchment paper from the kitchen. Um, actually, both sides are really shiny. And as you put it on, it won't smudge because there's no tooth on the paper it won't smudge the paper the uh, the pastel underneath so you can rest your arm on like that I work upright at an easel so um, I don't have the same problem of my arm being over the work we can go back in with some darks in there Another question, is your finger the best blender? Oh, good question. Um, I'd say sometimes it is, um, but sometimes I use some other tools. I'll just get those out for you. That's what we're coming to next. So you've seen the sponges that you can use from the pan pastel tools. These are really good blenders. You can also use this, which is um, packing noodles from any deliveries you get. Um, it's a squish and you can use them like this or the fat end. And they're really good for blending, especially on pastel mat. Not so good on any kind of um, UART or wet and dry paper because they disintegrate. But you can use instead... Where have they gone? This. This is a cross section of a pool noodle. Um, so what children use for in swimming pools, you can um, cut the end off and then cut it into sections. You can either do big chunks like this or you can cut little tiny pieces for specific jobs like this. This is really good because it's really strong and sturdy and doesn't wear out 
whereas these are made of cornstarch and if you put them in the sink they'll just disappear into nothing down the sink. You can also use um, cotton buds, they work really well on um, pastel mat and you can use these which are tortillon blenders, these are good on velour paper and you can also use rubber blenders, this one is so small on the end it's um, it's nearly worn out completely but um, you can use these rubber blenders are pretty good on um, pastel mat and these ones seem to work the best on uh, velour paper on pastel mat they tend not to blend they more move the pastel around and agitate it so you can then move it around somewhere else I'll show you what I mean so for example here let me zoom in a bit so I'm lifting the, the pastel up with this tortillon blender whereas this one um, this one will more blend and push it in because it's harder but that pastel that I've lifted up I can then move and drag out somewhere else if need be so if I've got an area of pastel that is maybe um, the wrong colour or I need to make it a bit thinner I can just loosen it with this one and then drag it out to somewhere else, there we go, you see it being dragged out down there and then I can push it in with a, a rubber blender good to experiment with all these different blenders you've probably got other things in your home you can use as well Sandra, yes you can use um, makeup sponge wedges, absolutely just like you can use eye makeup brushes um, Yep, just like this you can use makeup sponge wedges they don't last as long as the pan pastel ones because they're not as strong so the pan pastel ones are really quite dense so they will tend to last a bit longer and when you first start using those sponges be prepared for them to break quite quickly they have got a learning curve to them and you do need to be quite soft and gentle with them another question here what pencils am I using Jude um, yes <laughs> I use any pencil that is the right color um, I know everybody wants to find out what the perfect pastel pencil is or the perfect pastel but or even the perfect paper but it really is um, down to you and how you your techniques work with the pencils um, a lot of people enjoy using the Carbothello range with the, the pastel mat. They say this is the best range. But if you want to do portraits, the uh, Faber-Castell colours are much better. And they work just as well on pastel mat. I've got no issue in using both those brands. Um, I do love Caran d'Ache brand because they are so soft. And you get some super colours like this one which is let's bring that down again this one here which is a violet grey you don't get any of these super colours in um, any of the the other um, pastel pencil sets you also get some really super skin cut tones as well they're really really nice colours and you get a very wide range of creams and whites and off-whites, off-white to grey, off-white to green, off-white to blue. There's a really good range of pencils in there. Oh, and this is one of my favourites as well. It's a, um, uh, what's this one called? I don't think it's got a name on it. No, it's a number 631. It's a lilac colour and I have not found this one in any other range at all. So Again, just like the pastels, you need to buy them, buy a few at a time and work out which brand you like the best. Um, same with the pencils, buy a few of each, 
or even get one set of one and then choose by colour for the rest. The only brand I, I really don't like is the Derwent brand because they seem to break when I sharpen them quite a lot. So that that's, can be quite annoying. Have we got any other questions? Pencil. No, I think I've answered all your questions there. Um, fixative. This is a good one. Perfect colourless fixative. I've used this successfully on the Canson Me Tante and the Velour paper. Do not use it on pastel mat. Do not use any kind of fixative on pastel mat. And when you use fixative on any kind of paper, even the ones I've said it's really good on, test it first because your technique might be slightly different to my technique and I'd hate you to ruin hate it if you ruined your work um, because you used this so always test it and follow the instructions on the can what I do is I, I spray across like this and then down like this and then all from 30 centimeters away and then I walk away because it's so tempting to respray that you just need to walk away and leave it for 10-15 minutes for it to dry and again do not spray pastel mat it will ruin your work um, you'll you'll get all these little tiny blotches where the the liquid has settled on the pastel and it will start parting and you'll have to go over the whole thing with more pastel to rescue it what's next okay storage Again, this, this glassine paper is really good for storing. Uh, you can put it between sheets so you can have your painting, glassine, painting, glassing, like a sandwich. That's how you store it. Another really nice way of storing your work is to put it in a photo album. You can get some plain photo albums um, and you can use those little photo wedges, photo to wedges, photo edges, corner corner pieces that go um, you slot the photos into, and they will hold your work in place. Um, you can get, um, I think you can get eight by twelve um, photo frames now that are photo books that are just um, sheets of black paper. Um, and it looks really nice with all your work in there and just one piece at a time don't do it back to back that's a good way to store as well as using this um, glassine paper and as for framing you need a an extra mount underneath so that there's a gap between your work and the the painting so that any t tiny li little bits of pastel will fall down the gap And if you ever send your work to a framer, always send it with a note saying, do not spray. This is, It's so important. I have heard of people who send their work to a framer. The framer has just gone ahead and sprayed it and it's turned out a disaster and they've had to start again. So always send um, instructions to the framer or somebody else who's um, who, whoever is framing it for you. Um, and as I said, in my... Um, book that I'm sending out to you. It's a PDF book. Um, there are where to buy supplies in the UK, um, my top tips and FAQs. Um, although you've asked some really good FAQs today, um, so I shall be adding those to my frequently asked questions. There's some really good questions there. Um, what paper do I use for animal portraits? I, I use velour and pastel mat. They're good papers. Um, it's really about what works best for you. So you need to trial the papers and find a paper that, that you like the best. There, there isn't really a best paper. If we just go back to these four, I know brilliant artists who use all four of these papers for um, animal portraits or for people portraits or for landscapes or for um, anything they want to paint, abstracts, um, anything. 
Um, this one here, the one I first started on, Cancer Me Tant, um, is used by an artist called Harley Brown. I think he's Canadian. Um, pretty sure either American or Canadian. I think it's Canadian. Um, he sells his work for thousands of pounds. He uses Cancer Me Tant. He creates beautiful portraits of um, Indian girls. They are just stunning. Um, you could look him up as well. He's got um, a couple of books, one of them being Eternal Truths for Every Artist. It's a really good book. Um, so this pastel mat here, I know some fantastic artists who use this paper. Fantastic artists who use velour. More um, animal artists use velour, but you can also use it for landscapes, seascapes, whatever you like um, it really is um, down down to your personal choice and um, I know um, a number of artists who use this UART paper for uh, all manner of different subjects so get yourself a trial set and see which paper you like best and which one works best for you